It's a cool, airish morning in the mountains of Appalachia. Matt and I are out and about trying to get some things done. You can see him back there. He's doing some hoeing. We're going to plant some onions. I'm so excited about them. So I'm going to, I've got my little cheat sheet here in my paper so I can remember exactly what I want to say about them. So the Arkansas Hillbilly sent me these onions and they're multiplier onions. I've heard so many older folks in my area talk about that in the winter their family grew multiplier onions so that they had green onions, those fresh, wonderful green onions all winter long. Well, I've tried once or twice to kind of find them uh, by buying seeds and starting my own, but it kind of just never worked out for me, maybe because I didn't know what I was doing. Now, I do grow the Egyptian walking onions. A dear friend, Bill Dotson, sent me those, and uh, I've got those growing, and we really enjoy them. But I was really intrigued all the time by the multiplier onions. So the Arkansas hillbilly surprised me by sending me some, and uh, he was when I was talking to him on the phone, I, about them. He said I could call if I wanted more information. Of course I did. He started telling me this wonderful story. So I was like, wait a minute, you're going to have to let me go get a pen so I can write it down so I won't forget. So that's what's on my, on my paper. So he got these many, many years ago from a lady named Mrs. Stokes. And she was born in 1915. She died in 2000 at 85. And she got them, got the actual little bulbs of the onions from twin sisters who were older than she was. And those twin sisters told her that for as long as they could remember, the onions had been in their family. Every year they grew them. Uh, and she, they even thought maybe they come with them. They brought them, you know, when they come from overseas, from Europe, uh, when they come over over to the new land they thought even that they might have even been in their family that long so that's really pa really fascinating to me to have like an heirloom onion bulb like that that now i'm going to have opportunity to plant it's just wonderful so his advice was to plant them he said i should have already planted them but of course he didn't get to send them to me till till it was kind of almost um past the point he would normally plant them. He said the ideal time was between April, excuse me, August 15th and September. This is October now, the first day of October, so I'm a little bit behind, but we're going to plant them anyway. So his suggestion was to dig a really a deep fur. He called it a fur. I love that language, a really deep furrow, but fur is what we would say too. And put some water in it, water it really, really good, water it good, then put some fertilizer in it, then cover it all back up. Then once it's covered up, that's where you would plant your, just poke your onion. If you've planted onion, onion buttons before, you know you can just kind of poke them down in there, poke them down in there. And he suggested part, uh, planting them about a foot apart. We may not plant them that far apart just because we don't have very much land. We don't have a huge garden space. But then through the winter, they will begin to grow and they will multiply on each side of where you plant them and then you can harvest them. Uh, his other suggestion was, and I'm going to do this, was that come next year, next April, May, something like that, they will bloom like a lot of uh, your onions or your garlic does. You know how they'll uh, send up a stalk and have like a bloom on top. When that happens, it's time to cut them, cut those back, actually dig them up and spread them out, spread them out on, you know, something to let them dry good, and then store them in a dry place until next August when I would do it all over again. And he, he shared this with me that a lot of people he'd shared them with over the years said well you know they didn't follow his directions and they didn't pull them back up out of the ground they just left them because they are you know if they could live in the winter why wouldn't you just leave them well what happens is and maybe you could get away with it a year or two but over time what happens is they multiply to the point that they kind of choke themselves out and then the onions actually get smaller and smaller and smaller so that was that's the thing about planting them pulling them up that really would prevent that but I, I love the, I like the part about pull, pulling them up, especially for us because we are so limited on space. So being able to pull them up and then maybe plant some traditional green onions like I usually do in the spring, but plant these, pull them up, spread them out to dry, and then have them ready to plant for my fall garden next August. So I'm so thankful for the Arkansas Hillbilly for sending them to me and for explaining the wonderful history of them and then telling me how to do it. So that's definitely one thing we're going to do today and that's what Matt's working on uh, right now. There are a few other things we need to do today. We may try to clean out one or two more beds. Uh, this cool weather that we've had is really, all of our summer stuff has really went downhill. It was already going downhill, but even more so. 
um, the fall things that we've got planted though are really thriving right you can't really see it but underneath where i've got the camera my mustard greens are great they're thriving we need to be eating them uh, the okra is kind of on its way out now i still have some that i probably need to harvest today as i look over at there at it but exciting news, in the last two weeks, we've had our house stained. So to do that, we had to carry everything off all the porches. So a lot of that's still sitting out in the garden. So that's definitely another thing we need to do today is put all that stuff back uh, from where it's been sitting in the, in the garden. So a lot to do, and we've got this wonderful, beautiful weather to do it in. Another thing I wanted to make sure to get done today was I had left um, a few weeks ago when I tore out all the green beans up front, all the greasy beans, I had left a little bit of the Cherokee Trail bean that we grew for the first time this year and also the bean that a subscriber shared with me that he just called Grammy's bean. So I had left the last few of each of those on the vine so that they could dry and we could save seeds for next year. So I went ahead and got those today. So this is the Cherokee bean. It, it turns, the hull of it turns this really dark color. The bean, of course, inside, let me open this one if I can, turns black, a little black bean. And so that was those and there was quite a few of them so we'll have a lot of those to plant for next year and then the other one the grammy's bean it just the hull on it just stays this kind of cream color i guess and then the um i guess you would call it cream it is cream but and then the bean in it is white so we had several of those too and matt really liked these i liked them too they were really good and they seemed really prolific like a whole lot of beans on that little section you know we only had a small section um, and they they really produced good so I hope we can grow those next year and then hopefully even procure more seed as we continue to grow them especially if we have if our dreams of extending the garden happen and we have maybe a different place to plant even more beans which beans make up a lot of our diet that's one of the things that we we eat really often but I was glad to um, I used the container that my the onions were in that I would planted earlier and I got a whole whole thing full it's pretty full you can see so those are the beans that we'll have to plant next year we had a light tour day today you don't think so sorry thing I got a hold of is heavy. I'm sorry. Probably should have washed my hands before I ate this. I've been petting a chicken. Yeah. It should be good for your gut health. <laughs> a really cool day though. Matt said this high was supposed to be in the low 60s. That's so, nice. second weekend in a row I've not took not took my sweater off while we've been working outside. Matt even had a long sleeve on a flannel today, but he took it off. You still got long sleeves though. It's really, it's been sunny this morning, but right now it's really overcast. Maybe parts of the left from Hurricane Inn. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. 
We have a little wind every now and again, but not nothing major, nothing, just more like a breeze than a wind. But a lot of people, you got bugs. I got a fine stand of gnats. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking about us, and we, we didn't even barely have rain, so we made it fine. The first track of the storm did show it coming over us, but it ch changed course and it didn't come over us. But our hearts and prayers really go out to all those that suffered so much damage in Florida, especially. And so we really, really pray for them, for everyone that was affected by it. But thankfully, we were not. We could have used some rain, but uh, we didn't. It might have rained just enough to barely wet the deck during the night, but that mm -hmm. was that was all. Even the rain, we didn't even get any rain. Sometimes hurricanes do come up this way, though, and I'm always amazed by the power of something that could start so far away come all the way across the ocean, do so much damage, and then just continue, continue to do damage. I mean, it's been happening, I'm sure, since the beginning of time, but it's just an amazing thing when you think about a storm like that, that's so contained over a large area, but still contained, but unpredictable. Amazing power. Mm -hmm. Of course, today we're better, especially in America, better prepared. We have warnings that it's coming and all those kind of things. In the old days, there would have been no warning. I guess people that paid attention to the, if they lived on the sea, they could tell a change was coming. But totally different time. Reminds me, though, of the song. What is it? Um, I don't know the name of it, but Tony Rice sung it. He didn't write it or nothing, but about the Galveston flood. Oh, yeah. Death <clears throat> come for the people there, for sure. Mm -hmm. If you've never heard that song, I'll link to it below, but I warn you, it's a hard song to to hear, but it's a, it's, I mean, it's scary, but people wrote it about that storm, of course, and it was a really, one of the really bad ones, because in those days, there was nowhere really to go to get away from it, and they didn't have much warning and all those kind of things. There's some wind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can really tell in the last week the colors are changing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What was you going to say? I'm just going to say that that far back, people spent more time outside, so they may have had more, more warning than you think. They, they were a little bit more in tune with outside than, than we are, than people are today. Yeah. One hurricane that did do a lot of damage in our area was when me and Matt was first married. Opal, I think, was the, the name of it. Mm -hmm. and it would have been like in, I think it was the fall of 1995. So we've been married about a year. Is that when it was? I don't remember. I think so. We still lived with Granny and Pap. When we were first married, we lived with them while we were building our house. And that way we didn't have to pay rent somewhere else. And we were close to where we were going to build the house. So. They were nice enough to let us live with them, and we were still living with them, I remember. And uh, it was bad here, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it yeah, was it terrible. Was Most of the time, when those hurricanes come through here, it's the water. Tremendous amounts of rain causes flooding and landslides and those kind of things. And I guess we had a lot of rain with that one, mm -hmm. but it was the wind with that one. We got all the wind. And the power was off for a long, t several days, if mm -hmm. not a week. And I remember that morning, Matt, when he left to go to work, he had to, not just you, you and everybody else that were first <coughs> on the roads, had to cut their way out to where they could go to work. It was like, drive a little bit, cut, drive right. a little bit, cut. And then hopefully you'd run into another road where somebody else had already been doing that. There's a lot, a lot of timber down. <coughs>
Yeah, the power was, people had to come. A lot of times our EMC goes to places, probably this time, maybe some of them went to Florida. But that time people had to come to our area and help. Mm -hmm. Lots of power poles down and then trees on power poles and snapped off like at the top. and Trees on houses. Trees, trees on, on houses cars. and cars. Yeah, lots That's of bad. damage. That was the one, remember on Morgan Hill, all those houses were, wasn't that the one that at that time? Remember those? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was just laid over on the houses. And up the creek here, it was just like a like a giant, like pushing the weeds away. Like if I'm walking through the garden and I push the weeds, that's what it reminded me of. It's just big swaths of trees just laid over. Mm -hmm. It just was crazy. <clears throat> you can stand on one ridge and look over on the face of the other mountain and it was just like a, everything was laid down. All, all the trees were laid the same way. And there was a lot of them. I'd never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was thousands of trees on, yeah. on the ground. Yeah. I guess that's why in Appalachia and probably in other places too, but so many places are named like Hurricane Creek and stuff. Yeah. Maybe that was where it blew down in one of those storms and then they started calling it that. Because, of course, yeah. hurricanes don't originate here or anything like that. But and they don't come here often. Often, no. And you might get some minor effects from it as it as it goes on up the coast or whatever but we usually don't, rain. usually don't even get right. that much yeah but if we do it's usually rain <clears> but <throat> seldom those horrible <clears throat> winds like that but i bet that's why they're named those places like that remember remember hugo mm -hmm. that was before me and you were we hadn't even met mm -hmm. that was before you had the the honor and privilege of, of marrying you company. or meeting you but it it was pretty bad too. Uh, yeah. I remember the power went off even not where I was, and the storm was really bad. And that was before cable TV, or we didn't have it, but it wasn't like it is now. No, and you could just you get could 24 know. hours of updates and news and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I had it on the radio in the bed at night listening to it, and it was pretty bad here. And but it was really bad. I think it 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 landed somewhere in South Carolina. I think so. Yeah. And it was. Terrible. Oh, he's bad. It's one of my t-shirts I wear all the time. It's uh, Hugo Heroes. Come from Terry, Matt's cousin Terry. One time she gave me a bunch of clothes and that was in it and I still wear it. I've been wearing it all these years. I think it was 89. Yeah, I don't know. 89 don't was know. when that was, I think. Somewhere in there, 88, 89. I don't know. That's a really old t-shirt then. <laughs> <clears throat> it's been a good one. Mm-hmm. <coughs> you pretty old gal. Yeah, I know. I'm getting older <laughs> by the day, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Granny's hair is totally white now, and uh, Pap's been dead six years. And I guess when he died, maybe she was still dying it a little bit. It probably would have been white then, but it's totally been white for a long time now. But she tells me, told me one time, said, if your daddy could see my hair now, I know what he'd say. And I said, well, what would he say? And she said, he'd say the old gray mare ain't what she used to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, he would have just been teasing her. Yeah. yeah. This is a really nice day. Yeah. Last this week is, was really nice too, though. This is much better than that humid, searing heat to yeah. me. Don't you think this September and now today's the first day of October has been cooler than last year? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this, a lot of years, September is just as hot as August. Yeah. And then the first two weeks of October, I've seen it in the mid 90s. Yeah. But it's not been the case this year. No. I'm, I'm glad. We've been down in <laughs> the, the 30s in the mornings, yeah. and I've seen where we're forecasted next week to be in the low 40s and the 30s, too. Yeah, and then the highs are, uh, like today's, um, low to mid 60s, but even next week is the hottest I saw was mid 70s, yeah. which is still not too bad, well, especially if it's dry air. Right. <clears throat> I'm ready to see it snow. 
Yeah, I'm ready to see it snow, always. And the north wind blow. Yeah. That's what I like. And the smell wood smoke. Now, as soon as you said north wind, I have that song in my mind. <laughs> I have to link to that, too, so y'all can hear it. Wonderful song. Most people think I'm crazy for saying that, but that's what I like. Well, no, that's like just cold what you wind, like. cold air. It's people's, op I mean, depends on what you like. Paul is, my brother Paul is totally the opposite of Matt. He wishes it was, you wish it was 30 in the morning and 50 for yeah, the high. Yeah. And he wishes it was like maybe 50 in the morning and 80 for the high. <laughs> he wishes the 60 and 80, something like that. He likes warm weather. He don't like the cold weather. I like it all. I love for it to be hot and feel that burning hot sun on my back or my arms when I'm working. But then I love for it to be cold and, you know, have a fire in the basement and snuggle up and go outside in that brisk air that just goes deep in your lungs and then go in and warm. I love it all. love all of it. The one I like least, though, is that in between, between summer and fall. But other than that, and I don't really, it's not that I hate that. It's just my least favorite. But it's all so special. And how lucky to live. We live where we live in Appalachia. You get really distinct seasons. Mm -hmm. So like right now, it's overwhelming the growth. Mm -hmm. But come winter, it's <clears throat> gone, all of it. Totally gone. In three weeks here from right now, it'll be a drastic change. Yeah, drastic change. And it's already changing. You can yeah. see it. But oh, yeah. From now till then will be that much more of a change. Yeah, yeah. And then in spring, it all comes back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you can see the green creeping up through the mountains. And yeah. uh, one day you look out and you're like, oh, my goodness, it's leafed out. Where do the leaves? They just come overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's all amazing. I'm thankful that we... We live here in Appalachia and get to experience it. Yeah. This was, I mean, there's lots of reasons, but that's just one more reason. I'm happy we live where we do. And the, I mean, that's a plus that the hurricanes don't often come here. Yeah. Um, and the tornadoes don't often come here either. The mountains usually break up storms. Mm -hmm. There have been tornadoes here, even deadly ones, but not often. Mm -hmm. Very spread out. Yeah. There. <clears throat> so, pretty good place. I guess. Now that I've worked Matt way too hard, he says. What he says. I don't know what he's got to do the rest of the day, but I've got apples waiting on me. I've got to go can apples. I guess you could help me with the canning part. Yeah. Or you may have other things to do. Be canning tomorrow too. Looks like or Monday. Yeah, Matt will be canning. Not his. He's not harvested a deer yet, but we heard that today that Austin did. So Austin and Corey, they they want Matt to show them how to how to can deer meat. They've never done that before, so he'll be teaching and directing, I guess. Uh, and mm -hmm. if you, we have a video where Matt shows all that, so I'll link to that one too. The songs and the video. But yeah, so it's really exciting for Austin and Corey to want to do that. Corey's learned so much this year. Her and Katie both have always helped us, whether it was gardening or canning, putting up food. We made them when they were young. Of course, now that they're older, they do it willingly. They enjoy it. But, but it's different when you're doing it all on your own for yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's like you kind of help, but you don't really pay. You don't understand it all. You're just like, yeah, I'll break these up or yeah, I'll put them in the jars or whatever. But you've not got the big picture. So Corey's learned a lot this year. Oh, and she's got the desire to learn. Yeah, she really wants to learn. So. <clears throat> and that's yeah, that's a good thing, and yeah. it's kind of rare for young people now. Yeah, but it's good. I mean, it's a and, good skill to have. And Katie will get to where she's interested in it too. She's just so busy. But I was like that. Like I helped all the time, but it wasn't like I was. Um, hyper focused on it until we got married and I started mm -hmm. feeding my family and then mm -hmm. I was like granny how do you do this granny how do you do this pap how do you do this calling them every 15 minutes mm -hmm. asking them stuff so that's what's happened to Corey is now that she's got her her own place and mm -hmm. her in Austin and thinking about the future and she's the one buying groceries every week not not me and me so that that's Anybody that buys groceries, especially today, makes you realize how wonderful it is to have food that you harvested yourself, whether from your garden or like mm -hmm. taking a deer this time of the year.
<clears throat> Canned deer meat is rocket fuel. It is. Any any wild meat is, as opposed to domesticated, uh, farmed yeah. meat, is it's just so much. It, yeah. It's good, if, especially if you know how to prepare it. But it's just so much better for you because yeah. there's no question that it's not been. Uh, fooled with or mishandled in any way as long as you know how to to do it it's it's yeah. uh, and you can't get any better food than that harvesting from the wild it can you yeah. can't get any more nutritious better yeah. uh, healthy food than that yeah be wonderful if we could you know if you have a farm and you raise your own animals then yeah. you can do it differently yeah. but, but matt's talking about if you buy <clears throat> from the typical grocery store mm -hmm. yeah but if you have your own i wish we had a place where we could raise hogs and yeah do all that but we don't maybe someday yeah. until then you'll have to learn to eat squirrels and I like squirrel and deer oh yeah I do too yeah and fish we had fish this week oh my it was so good yeah Katie and Nick supplied us with the fish it's so good yeah it's, um, it's good stuff I'll eat I'd rather have fish than any of it pretty much I'm a fish <coughs> person oh I am too I'll really 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 good fresh caught fish is hard to beat, mm -hmm. but I'm, you know, I like I like the deer meat just as well. Yeah. I just I've eaten so much more of that than I have the fish. Right. And yeah, I, I love. I'm not going to turn down no deer meat for sure. When uh, Pap was a boy, his family lived. When he was born, he lived on the Hawshaw farm here in Cherokee County. And they were sharecroppers, that's why they lived there. But he had memories of uh, him and his mother, because it's right along the Hiawassee River, fishing. And they would take the fish. They caught, of course, I'm sure they ate a lot of it. But they would take it, he said, he called it the big house, up to the big house where the people that owned the farm lived. And his mother would trade those fish for butter or whatever they needed. Maybe they, they probably didn't have a cow, they was probably mm -hmm. too poor, but she would trade the fish, so. So he, he grew up, even from a small age, fishing there on the mm -hmm. Hawassi River, and um, I wish we did. Wish I mean, I don't, I wish we had more access to fishing, I guess is what I mean. Not that we grew up on a sharecropper farm, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Well, I can tell you how you can do it. How? Uh, permit me to buy a boat, <laughs> and I'll go get you some you've, fish. You've had a boat before. Well, I've not had a boat in 20 years. I know, but... Uh, yeah. No, I think it's about time to get another one, yeah. a small one. A little John boat yeah. or something. Just something to put her around in fish. That'd be nice. So okay. is that a maybe? Maybe. Okay. I think you pretty much do what you want to do. You don't have to ask me for nothing. Okay. I'll let you get your coat and you go get one. Yeah. I'll be back by dark with one. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather creek fish, but yeah. it's just not as. <clears throat> it, it's a you got to go further, and it's a little little harder here to do than it yeah. is to just go put it in a lake because we've got lake multiple in every direction. multiple yeah. lakes around us, you know. TVA lake in every direction, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But I'd rather I'd rather get back in the mountains and creek fish. That's what I like and enjoy it more. Yeah. But the funny thing is, I like the fish out of the lake. That as far as eating them, I like the taste of them better. But I'd rather catch the trout. Mm. I'm not a big trout fan. I mean, I'll eat them, but I don't like them. I, I like it all. I don't like them like I do some other fish. I like any fish. One <clears throat> back in the days when me and Matt was courting, that's what we did a lot. Mm -hmm roam the mountains and fish. I didn't fish. I just played around the water and looked at stuff. And sometimes I'd fish, but not often. Matt make me a fishing pole. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Yeah. And now we're old. And now we're old. Yeah. <laughs> we're older. Older. Hey, we could still go fish. We got it in us. Yeah. We didn't have a garden to take care of in those days and all the other responsibilities. Yep. So we did get a lot done today uh, with the onions. I'm just so excited about them. It'd be so wonderful to have a green onion in the, in the middle of the winter to eat with your soup beans and cornbread or 
chili or whatever you were eating, so I'm really excited about that. i excited about getting those dried beans that, that we can turn around and plant again next year. Matt really loved the one we're just calling Grammy's bean. Yeah, good. They were really good. And we liked the Cherokee one okay, but we liked the other probably better. I, I would like to try the Cherokee though, the dried, let them have enough that you could let dry so that you could reconstitute and use them as a dried beans. I want to try that. Anyway, so, and then we got our porch almost put back together from all the stuff we had to move. So we did get a lot done. Yeah. Yeah. So we hope you enjoyed coming along with us today on this cool day, Irish day in Southern Appalachia. We hope as always, you'll continue to drop back by often and help us celebrate this wonderful place that we live. Just beautiful. This one over here is still going. It's pretty, see the orange, mm. but that one's just amazing. Amazing. Look at our t look at those tomatoes. Have you ever seen anything look that bad in your life? You were so right, <laughs> wasn't you? You were right. Well, you were they, right, and I was wrong. I mean, they 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 get up, and it looks like they're going to do good, and looks like they've got time, but just the smallest amount of cool, cool air they cannot they can't, stand. They it. can't take it. Yeah, they can't take it. Now you could have done them in the greenhouse, and they'd done it. Yeah, if you could get in the greenhouse. Well, we. That's going to have to be a project. We're going to get that stuff and we're going to cover the ground so that don't happen no more. Yeah. That's going to be a whole project. You can't even get in the greenhouse. With the... Well, I tried to wait eat it all summer and you kept telling well, me not to. Well, I'd hate for you to go in there when it's 500 degrees and you're the exhaust in there and all that. But, yeah. That <clears> desperately <throat> needs to be took well, care of. I can go in there and do it without breathing. I mean, they taught, taught me how to do that in the fire department. Not, just don't <laughs> breathe. Oh, my God. Crazy. You remember that? No. Who was it? Some boy, I can't remember who he was, uh, was working on a house somewhere and went, some boy had to get under the crawl space and I said, we won't be able to see you in there. I ain't got a light or anything. He said, I'll do it. Let me do it. He said, I started down there and he said, they taught me how to see in the dark in the fire department. Oh, yeah. And it's just black as a cave yeah. inside of a cow in there and he yeah. just took off through there. <laughs> I don't, it's been so long ago, I can't remember if, if, if he actually could see or got anything done yeah. or not but I mean I squatted <laughs> down there and looked and it was just, just total blackness pitch, like space pitch dark black yeah no. I mean I wasn't going under there yeah he was he went though he, yeah but he said they taught me how to see in the dark in the fire department and I always thought that was pretty comical yeah. I mean how could you how could you teach how to do yeah. that I mean unless you had night vision yeah. goggles or yeah, something well, he didn't yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know that's funny he's a little cabbage back here or pretty look at that one's pretty big yeah we need to, I mean, I'm, I wish we'd got a little more rain. I'm going to have to start watering or something if we don't get some. We did get some this week, though, didn't we? Before, not nothing to do with the hurricane. Didn't we get, like, two days of rain? Or am I imagining that? Was that last weekend or something? Seems like it rained recently. You need to, you need to bump up to two Geritol. <laughs> no. Because it's not rained. I thought it rained last week or something. Yeah. Well, anyway, then I need to water if I need the Geritol. And yeah. I need to get you two of them and maybe you can remember the last time it rained. Yeah. I guess you'd like to have some dinner, wouldn't you? Well, I don't know. That's another thing they taught me in the fire department to not eat. Oh. <coughs> I'm hungry. Katie ate your sausage, though. That's what she was going to eat. Mm. Uh, I can always come up with something. I'm like a stray dog. I'll eat about anything. Mm. Go eat yeah. something. Right. What'd you do with your paper? You still got it? Yeah.